Last year, uh, I had to interrupt Phil Plate and cut his time down, and this year I don't have to, and I'm delighted. We're just going to start lunch a little late. Phil Plate is a great guy, a dear friend. I have nothing mean to say about him. <laughs> Only a scoundrel would say something. Not! Dr. Phil Plate is an astronomer, and I actually started off as an astronomy major for the first two years of college, and then I found out about the actual job market for astronomers, and I changed majors. <laughs> Phil didn't. And I first met Phil at the Amazing Meeting 1, and frankly, I was not that impressed. I mean, sure, he was witty and smart, a great speaker, very knowledgeable and charming, insightful and kind. He was warm and friendly and helpful. He donated materials to our auction. He carried boxes around, and he rescued a basket of little fuzzy bunny rabbits, which he gave to Penn & Teller for safekeeping. <laughs> but, but still, there was something about him I just didn't like. And I found out after the amazing meeting from Linda that Phil was rated as the very best single thing at Amazing Meeting 1, where I also spoke. Phil received his Ph.D. in astronomy from the University of Virginia, Mr. Jefferson's University, in 1994. And while there, he helped teach introductory astronomy classes and for three years ran a nighttime lab where students used binoculars and telescopes to observe the sky. Oftentimes, his students could be heard to remark, yep, there's the sky. <laughs> Phil's work as an active astronomer is only part of what he does. He is the bad astronomer, and he runs badastronomy.com, a very important website. Phil takes on the silliness that falls from the skies in the forms of moon landing deniers and Planet X proponents, and more so does so on national radio and television. He is a voice of astronomical reason in a cosmic wilderness of misinformation. I believe it was the Hittite poem, Anonymous, <laughs> who must have been thinking of Phil when he said, the stars above the cosmic mist Stir hearts that dream of things unknown, that lie beyond celestial bound, but in our minds are grown. The wonder that I see at night when I behold the lights that shine compel me to trek on and on and upon the truth to dine. I wish to know that I may know the things that really are and not the things that folly sends attached to lovely stars. The wisdom that I seek, my friend, is little more than light that shining from the mind of man can tell us what is right. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Phil Plate. Thanks, Hal. With all sincerity, I'm sure that was. Um, yeah. How the, 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 the poem that you read is very nice, thank you. And it turns out um, uh, he has reminded me of a poem that was written by a, a, a not very well-known French poet, uh, L'Astronomer du Mal, actually, um, <laughs> that may be appropriate. Hal's puns can be so absurd that his silence is usually preferred. <laughs> he sits there as evidence, as if sent here by providence that it's better to be seen and not heard. <laughs> so, I've been, I've been asked actually several times by people, you know, what is it with you and Hal? And um, I, we actually, we, we talked about it, I'm not really sure. Um, but I, I think part of it is just a, is a, is a, a camaraderie that goes back because we both attended the University of Michigan, as you, as you may have noticed in his, some of his speeches earlier. Um, I got my undergraduate degree there, he got his graduate degree there. Um, and we also actually attended, um, we have something else in common, and that I, intend, I attended a, a, the university that was founded by Hamilton. Oh, oh, wait. Hamilton didn't found a university, Thomas Jefferson did. That's right, I'm sorry. But you know, I do have a present for Hal. It's actually the uh, alumni news magazine of Mr. Jefferson's university, so I thought you might want to actually Take a look through there and see if you want to get a, you know, a degree from a real place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh my gosh. It is a, it's more than a pleasure to be here. It's, it's a tremendous honor. Um, I, for some reason, um, Randy emailed me about a year and a half ago and said, do you want to come and give a talk at a, at a meeting we're going to have? And I thought, you know, James Randy's emailing me. This is so cool. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's amazing, so to speak, uh, to be here and to be able to talk about what I, what I didn't mean to devote my life to, but which has taken me over like some sort of virus. Uh, and that is, that is bad astronomy. And some of you weren't here last year, and, and, and uh, maybe you didn't hear my going on about Planet X. I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. But for those of you who don't know, you know what we're talking about here, I run a website called Bad Astronomy, where I keep track of myths and misconceptions in astronomy. This is the URL. It's badastronomy.com. It's very easy to remember. Uh, it's better than what it used to be, which was uh, www.patriot.net slash username slash something slash twiddle public HTML. So I decided, you know, maybe it's worth the 25 bucks to get a shorter URL. Uh, it so happens that there's a book based on the website, and it's on sale now. Um, the beauty of PowerPoint is I thought about that this morning, so I sat back there and, and, and just put that together. I think there are just, there are just a few copies left. And they are a dollar off cover price because I signed them and defaced them, and so it's not worth as much. <laughs> last, year's, uh, last year's amazing meeting was in Florida, which was really nice to be there in January. It's great to be here in Vegas. I have a lot of Vegas in my blood. As a matter of fact, I'm a debunk, debunk, burn in love. Um, yeah, I was hoping that would get a bigger. Ah, oh, there we go. Thank you. Just want to let you know that Hal's not the only punster here. And you'll probably get a feeling for that on the titles of the talk, uh, the slides that are coming up here. Last year's meeting, which we naively called just the amazing meeting and not amazing meeting one, it was a lot of fun. I mean, there were some ups and some downs, as, as Hal mentioned, but we all had a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, I got to meet a lot of people, a lot of people I've, I've heard about a long time, my whole life, like Jack Horkheimer, who used to, be, used to call himself the star hustler until Hustler Magazine came out. For any of you that met him last year, you might wonder why he bothered changing his name. He was an outrageous guy. There we are comparing hairlines. That was a lot of fun. Randy had a lot of fun. It was pretty clear this was the forum gift to Randy, the Mobius strip scarf and the Klein bottle hat. And of course there were things that were even more fun. I got to meet a lot of people I'd known on the forum. There's Luciana there. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And uh, so that was all really great. And, and last year, the circumstances weren't that good. Okay, Michael Shermer gave, the, gave the, 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 the anchor talk in the morning, and then Hal came on and said that uh, the Columbia shuttle had blown up. It was that morning. And then, and then I had to turn around, and actually after Dan Garvin from the Church of Scientology spoke, I had to come around and, and talk about Planet X, and the, the whole Planet X saga, basically sort of a rah-rah NASA thing, and, and NASA had just blown up a shuttle. So that was a little difficult, and Hal gave, and, and to, give, to give Hal the credit he actually does deserve, gave one of the, the finest extemporaneous speeches I've ever heard. And it was tough. It was tough to go up, up on stage in front of these people and try to be funny in a, a silly and, and semi-absurd way. You know, the circumstances here are different. It's been, a, it's been a year. We're getting answers about the shuttle. And NASA's had a series of successes. There was a probe that went to a comet. You may not have heard about this. The Stardust, OK, some people are nodding their heads. The Stardust probe, which went to uh, a comet Vilt 2 and actually snapped pictures of the core of this comet, which are some of the coolest pictures I've ever seen. We never had a close-up picture of a comet like this, and it was really neat. And of course, we have the, uh, the rover on Mars, which I will be talking about later. And so we, you know, there, there are better things going on here. And I started thinking, well, now I actually have an opportunity to try to make some jokes that aren't just sort of nervous jokes. They're actually real jokes.